This unit is one of our power drive telescopic drum handling units. So at the back end here we have the tiller assembly so this drives the unit and we can steer it from the back end here. The front we have our universal drum rotator head. This is very adaptable and can pick up lots of different types of drums. So first drum we're going to start with is this 200 litre steel but the head can actually adapt very quickly all the way down to a 50 litre drum and that could be steel or plastic or even an open top plastic. The first thing we do, we've opened up the arms at the front of the unit ready to drive into the drum and we need to set the height so the band is in the middle of the drum. We come back to the tiller here, there's a key, we switch on the key to power up the unit. We check the battery condition meter to make sure that we have enough power in the batteries. This is the charge connection here, we make sure that it's not on charge, there's no cable plugged into the unit. We have our emergency stop which is in the up position, so we're ready to go. Pull the handle back and drive into the drum. As soon as we're into the drum there, we're going to close the doors at the front. Then we have this blue strap with the stainless D-ring which hooks over the front of the door there. We then pull the strap tight, keeping it in our right hand and we tension up the ratchet. The next thing we have a rim clamp on this side we put on the top rim of the drum. We'll show you in a short while how this connects, we'll do a close up so you can see how the ratchet works and how the rim clamp works. This goes over the top of the drum and even if it was an open top drum and we remove the lid you can still connect this clamp and this stops the drum slipping. It's very important with very slippy plastic drums where you have a smooth side to fit the rim clamp. So we're all clamped up there, we're connected at the front and we're ready to lift. The lift is done from the buttons on the tiller head here. So if we want to lift we press the up button This unit's got about 2.5 metres of lift, so we steer it around, drive it to the next location. We come to the gearbox here, there's a flip down handle, and then we turn the handle to rotate the drum. Once we've dispensed all the material, Put the drum back into the vertical. You can fold this handle up by pulling it out and then flipping it up out of the way. We come back to the tiller and we press down. As soon as the drum's on the floor, we can release the ratchet, unhook it from the front arm, and there's a peg on this right arm, we can hang the D-ring on so it doesn't trail on the floor. Disconnect the rim clamp, and then drive away to the next drum. We're now looking at the clamping system. So we've connected the stainless steel D-ring onto the front of the band and now we want to tension up the blue strap. So the first thing to do is grab hold of the blue strap and hold it in your right hand and pull the slack out. So you must keep the strap in your right hand and then we get the ratchet, we can release it there. Then we can actually ratchet the band closed. Now we need to ratchet this to tension the blue strap until we start to see a slight deflection in the drum. That's it. That's as tight as we need to be. Then 
we can pull this release go round to the park position you'll find now the ratchet strap is tight the next thing we're going to connect to the drum is the rim clamp this is the rim clamp here we can adjust the height of the rim clamp by taking out this R pin out of the side and we can remove the pin and then we can change the height for tall drums or lower it right down for short drums so set it just below the height of the drum put the pin in and then lock it by putting the R pin through now to connect to the top of the drum we hold it up under the rim so you can see there that this is right underneath the rim of the drum and you can keep this pulled up with your hand you move this over the top hold them together and then wind down the butterfly nut you tension this just nice and comfortably tight there and this will support the drum in the vertical now when we want to disconnect so we've lifted the drum and tipped it we come down again we pick up the blue strap which we hold in our right hand we release the lever and bring it out and then let go of the middle then take another bite and pull it all the way over so the ratchet is straight this has released the strap now and then if we push that away that gives us the slack we need to disconnect at the front of the drum then we can put the pin on the front ring we then come to the rim clamp hold it up again undo the nut and disconnect we're now ready to move the drum away I'm now going to show you how to change the configuration of the band to pick up this 50 litre drum so currently it's set for the 200 litre drum that we've just picked up the green one and now we're going to change it so the first thing to do is we can move these arms in so both arms slide along this back rail so we can move them in to create some space if we move in here there's two R pins in the back of the band so we can remove these pins so they're just joined together there on a chain then we can move this arm in as well now at the back of the band here there's a series of holes and this allows us to disconnect the back of the band that was locked in by the R pins and move them closer together to reduce the circumference of the band so this is a 50 litre drum so if we remove the band hold it in this hand and move it right the way across and then if we want more space we can actually bring this arm in and we can connect it into the holes in this position we can now refit the R pins so the band is now reconnected on this back position we can move the arm a bit back out there and then we can move it into this 50 litre drum so I'll do that now I'm going to drive the unit forward very nice accurate control on this unit we can go very slowly as soon as we touch the drum we can push in a bit further just to reduce the circumference then we take off the strap put it round the front and connect it to the D-ring we then pull the strap tight keeping it in your hand we can then lower the rim clamp so we take out the pin we lower it down so it goes underneath the drum reinsert the R pin again hold up the rim clamp 
and spin down the nut. That's it, we're ready to lift. Once we've lifted the drum, we can then tip into the vessel. We're now looking at the controls of the unit from the back, and we have the tiller assembly. And the first thing we have is we have the key. We switch the key on, the key's in the on position. Then I have our emergency stop. Now, if you wanted to stop all function of the unit in an emergency, we press the emergency stop. To reset, we simply lift. Now with the tiller, if we let go of the tiller, the gas ram puts the tiller in the vertical by itself. And this will close off the power to the drive and apply the brake. So the unit will not work and drive in this configuration when the tiller is in the vertical. And the same full horizontal. If we pull it back and go full horizontal, it won't drive neither. There is a switch on the front and the back of the tiller. So the tiller has an operational range. Okay, so we're switched on. The emergency stop is set and we check the battery condition on the meter here to make sure we have enough battery in the unit, enough charge. If we don't have enough charge, we put the unit on charge. There's a charging light here which indicates when the unit is being charged. When the unit is being charged and is plugged into a main supply, the unit is not able to drive and this is a safety function. Now focusing on the controls on the tiller here, the first button here is the horn. The second one is lowering down of the, of the drum at the front. We press this, it goes down. This is the lift one, the arrow there showing lift. If we let go it stops. And then we have the two butterfly throttles. So we have the left and the right. These are joined together through the tiller. If we rotate them forwards, the unit goes forwards. We rotate back, the unit comes back. The brake is automatically applied. The next one is the auto reversing button. That's this big red button at the back of the unit. If you reverse and this touches your body, it changes the drive automatically into forwards. So if I go forward, then back and I'll touch the button, it'll let it touch my hand, you'll see the drive will change into forward. You can go very slow with the unit, so if you just roll the throttles nice and gently, you can just creep nice and gently forward, the same nice and gently backwards. It's very important to have this nice precise drive when you're handling drums. I'll now show you how the mains power lead connects to the unit. So we take the mains power lead here, we open up the end cap, place it onto the socket and push it tight. When the unit's on charge, the charging light will be indicated and you're not able to drive it while it's connected to the mains power supply providing the power is switched on. If we're going to leave the unit on charge, we switch off the unit and remove the key to prevent anyone using the unit. And the most important thing to remember, it's a single operator unit and no one should be standing in front of the unit when the unit is being operated.